Everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics, and this is my review of the Vortex Razor HDE 1 to 6 by 24 variable magnification optic. The low power variable magnification optic category keeps growing and it keeps getting more and more popular. You're starting to see uh, variable magnification optics replace red dots as standard optics on many rifles that, are, that have various purposes in law enforcement, military, uh, self-defense. And that's a good thing because variable magnification uh, optics give you something that red dots not, might not necessarily be able to do or do as well. But because there's so many options out there, we need to know what's good and what isn't. Uh, now, I've been seeing the Razor, the HD, uh, for quite some time come through classes, and it, arguably it's probably one of the more popular lower magnification variables out there. Um, I've shot them before. This is actually the first one I've, I've owned, but I've seen them on students' rifles. I've checked them out, helped guys confirm zeros and things like that. So I've got a, an appreciation for the older model, and one of the things that I would, I would say that I definitely noticed right off the bat and consistently whenever I would interact with one, regardless of what rifle it was on, is how heavy it was. Now, weight is very subjective based on personal body type and, and just how much physical fitness is that you actually get into and, and what your, your general phys physical regimen is and what you're required to do, but weight is still a constant. Uh, even if you're in really good shape, if a rifle's heavy, the rifle's heavy. It doesn't matter how strong you are, and fatigue is a, a win kind of thing, not an if kind of thing. So the lighter an optic is, uh, the lower overall fatigue point you're, gonna, you're going to uh, encounter, I should say, the longer it's going to take you to fatigue, which is definitely a consideration for work guns and for guns that you're going to be using for extended periods of time. If you train a lot, you practice a lot, you're probably going to notice that weight. So the older Razor, the weight was definitely an issue for me, not that I wouldn't necessarily use the optic, it's just that I did, wasn't... Um, it wasn't necessarily appealing to me because I could get similar performance out of optics that weighed less already alluded to, the first thing you're going to notice with the new E model is it's lighter. Uh, 10 ounces have been shaved off of the weight, which is considerable. Uh, comparing red dots to uh, variable magnification optics, the biggest comparison really besides performance, if we're just talking about weight, is red dots are generally almost always going to be lighter. So if you're making the transition to, or you're interested in making the transition to a variable magnification optic, weight is going to have to be a consideration. So the lighter the optic is, the better off you're going to be. Uh, now, the uh, getting right into the features, the, the, the Razor is offered in three different reticles. You've got MRAD, you've got the venerable MOA, which people are starting to get away from, and then the, the particular one that I reviewed has the BDC, which I actually like a lot. It's a second focal plane reticle, um, and it can be illuminated. You've got illumination settings, which we'll talk about with features, uh, to, on one power, uh, have it behave very, very much uh, like a red dot optic. Now, one of the training issues that people get into, um, and, and of course the, the features of the optic and, and the, the uh, tolerances of the optic definitely factor into this, is uh, acquisition of the reticle and popper cheek weld and being able to pick it up as consistently and quickly as you would with a red dot. Well, one thing that always appealed to me about the Razor was the very generous uh, ocular lens, uh, my, my uh, I guess, accommodation standoff, or what some people refer to as your eye box. The eye box on the Razor is very generous on your one power, so if you're going to use it as a traditional RDS, if you're going to illuminate that reticle and use that reticle point just like you would an aim point or an MRO or, or a spark or whatever you're using, uh, it's definitely going to lend itself very well for those purposes. You can run it qu quick and consistent, and if you're transitioning, your first time transitioning from a red dot to a variable magnification optic, the Razor is going to make that transition pretty easily because it's so generous and it doesn't require a lot of retraining yourself to apply a greater degree of discipline to your cheek weld. Now your cheek weld should be consistent across the board, but the razor is going to give you a little bit more um, leeway, if you will, uh, to make that transition from a red dot, which has unlimited eye relief, uh, to an optic that has a very limited eye relief. Um, and I say limited in regards to comparing a magnification optic to a red dot. The eye relief on the razor is actually very generous, which is 
why I'm talking about this. It's something that uh, is going to make your transition a little bit easier. If you're already familiar and you've already been using low uh, variable magnification optics, you'll find that the eye relief is consistent with what you'd expect from almost any good optic. Uh, so one thing that I definitely want to underscore besides the weight savings getting into this is the eye relief on the razor uh, is awesome. And eye relief uh, is definitely a consistent factor and a deciding factor in choosing a low variable magnification optic or any magnification optic. There's always going to be a point of contention with first focal plane versus second focal plane. My personal feeling on it is first focal plane is awesome uh, until you get to a certain magnification and then it can become problematic with reticle size versus target size or desired point of impact size. Uh, on low variable magnification optics, I actually prefer the second focal plane because my reticle remains the same size regardless of magnification setting, uh, which makes point of aim and acquisition of my reticle and my point of aim much easier consistently uh, over a wide degree of applications. Now. Some people are going to stop in the middle. Uh, I'm usually a one power or a maximum magnification shooter. I usually don't, you know, start to turn it up one to six and be like, oh, I'm going to stop at like three-ish. That's just not the way that I do things. Uh, I generally run one power until I need PID or extended range distances, and then I'm going to crank it all the way to six or all the way to eight or whatever the magnification is. This particular optic, the one to six. Uh, the reticle being consistent uh, and not changing size is, to me, an advantage for the fact that this optic is not designed to be or intended to be a long range precision optic. It's basically a red dot with magnification power. That's kind of the way that I think about it. I know there's definitely some functional differences between the two systems. Like if you were to compare this to say uh, a red dot with a flip to side magnifier. I know there's differences. I understand that. But mentally that's kind of the way that I apply my technique and my, my shooting and the way that I configure the rifle for this particular type of optic. I want a red dot that also gives me PID at extended ranges. That's the way that I think about it. And in relation to that, I guess in talking about that, the second focal plane reticle, this particular reticle, the BDC reticle, I found to be, lend itself very well to that application and that use. Um, on a one to six that has half MOA adjustments, I'm not really worried about MOA or MRAD. Yeah, it would be cool to have it if I wanted to do some longer range shooting and I needed some more precision for holdovers and such. But all things considered, six power, I'm probably not gonna be shooting uh, PID out at two, three, four, five hundred meters. So for an intermediate use uh, optic, uh, that BDC, that ballistic calc or that ballistic optic, or sorry, reticle, is going to give me exactly what I want without kind of busying up the reticle needlessly with information provided that is nice to have, but it's something I'm not necessarily going to use on a six power optic. Now with a zero distance of 100 meters, the BDC also gives me the uh, option of providing very convenient holdover points for close quarter shooting. If you got 100 meter zero on a gun, um, your point of aim point of impact is going to be more extreme than a 50 or a 25, maybe what you're used to on your red dot, at those close quarter distances, those more likely distances. Uh, I still might need the BDC for the distances it's for, you know, getting out to two, three, four hundred meters. Uh, but more realistically, more likely, more probable, uh, I'm going to have to hold over it, you know, three yards, five yards, seven yards, ten yards, so on and so forth to make sure that I'm getting the hits that I want. And I'm also getting my uh, hide over bore clearing, cover objects, cars, anything I'm shooting over, under, or around. Uh, so the BDC also provides a secondary advantage there. It's not exactly precise. Your point of aim, point of impact, holding on the BDC at three yards is not going to be the same as if you actually did your data hold. But it's going to give you the clearance that you need to put the round within an inch uh, of where you wanted it to go. Now, review process 2,000 rounds. I'm going to put 2,000 rounds through this optic uh, to give it kind of accelerated life cycle and really give my, my me the ability to get a feel for what I'm, uh, what I'm using, how durable it is, how consistent it is, uh, and if it's something that I would recommend, which is the whole point of this video. Um, one of the things that I noticed about the, the Razor in general, just the overall design, is just the, uh, the lack of clutter when you're in the eye box, when you're actually using your eye relief and you're using the optic on one powder or any real setting. I like the fact that all I see is what I'm looking at through my objective window. I don't see knobs, I don't see turrets, I don't see extra stuff. I just got my clear point of view and there's not a lot of other data there to block my vision. Some other optics I've used in the past, I'd be on the optic, but I'd be picking up a knob in my peripheral vision, which would block my ability to, to occlude or not occlude those images uh, for shooting purposes, which I found very problematic for the low variable power of magnification optics on one power setting. It, think of it using a, like a red dot. I don't want to snap into my sight picture and then have a knob blocking my non-dominant eye. That's really annoying and it's also a bad design. 
So I like the fact that the razor's knobs are as close to the body as they can be. Now getting specifically into the turrets, uh, click adjustments, resettable, uh, and they have capture caps for your elevation and your windage, which something I didn't used to like, but I've grown to like it more and more the more I knock rifles around and the more that I just interact in the environment. Uh, and the fact that I'm generally a holdover shooter, especially on low power optics, uh, for longer range guns I may actually specifically dial in my distance, but on the shorter guns I generally, or the shorter range guns or the shorter magnification, lower magnification optics, I generally just hold over. Uh, so being able to replace those caps after I've got my zero locked in and I've got my turret zeroed out is really nice. Now, the reticle adjustment is 10 powers, 10 intensities of brightness with an offsetting in between each and it's lockable, which I really like that feature. Uh, some of the optics I've used in the past, especially being a right-handed shooter, my, my uh, uh, reticle uh, brightness knob is usually on inboard side. It rubs up against gear and it, it adjusts it or turns it on or turns it off or just creates uh, general malaise uh, with my feelings and my, my ability to use the reticle on the brightening setting I want or sometimes snap into the rifle and realize the reticle has been turned off. Uh, not a huge issue. But it's nice if somebody put some thought into like, hey guys, can we make this lockable? Well, yes, we can. Let's do that. So I definitely appreciate that. As usual, we do the 500 round burn down. The reason I do the burn down is accelerated rate of fire to see if that can create any kind of problems with the object uh, that's being reviewed. In this case, it's, it's the Vortex Razor. Now, heat's probably not going to be an issue because the optic sits so far away from the receiver that I doubt with any realistic amount of fire you're going to have heat transfer up through the various types of metals to actually create any issue with the optic itself. So the 500 round burn down is basically just accelerating rate of fire to see if that uh, taking that much shooting and conditioning it into a very, very short period of time can create any problems at all. Successfully made it through the 500 round burndown, which which I you know I didn't expect anything different. One thing I will say though is the quality of the glass during that 500 round burndown. If you've gotten a gun hot on magnified optics, you probably notice that you pick up those uh, the mirage uh, heat streamers, whatever you want to call them. The hotter the gun gets, the more they can uh, distort uh, your view of your point of your desired point of aim, uh, and that is obviously a factor of uh, physics and, and, and how heat reacts to air and humidity and temperature and, and interacts with uh, your viewing through the prismatic of a glass, uh, but it's also attributable to lens quality. Uh, the higher quality of the lens, the less, in my experience, you're going to notice or I guess be affected by uh, that heat emanating from the gun itself or from the environment you're in. Um, some optics just show mirage uh, a little bit more readily than others based on the quality of the glass. So the vortex quality of the glass, um, while of course I'm going to get mirage when I fired 500 rounds, I mean I started getting it probably around 200, 300 rounds, uh, it wasn't as dehabilitating for my sight picture purposes as I've had experience with some optics in the past. And of course optic height over the, uh, the muzzle definitely factors into that as well. The elephant in the room is always durability. Uh, is it going to be durable? You know with rifle optics test, you've probably already been looking forward to it. I do an accelerated life cycle uh, bordering on the unrealistic by doing a one-story drop off the rifle um, and do my little balcony toss. Uh, the reason I do this is to see if I can knock the scope out of zero. Uh, it's, of course, my caveat always is if your rifle takes any kind of spill, if you lean it against a bumper and the rifle falls over, I would do everything you can to check that zero before you trust that life to that gun just in case because Schrodinger's optic is it's both zeroed and unzeroed until you check it after a fall. That's something that you definitely want to do. But I want to see if there's a possibility, a propensity, if you will, or a likelihood of the optic losing zero after suffering an extreme fall. So to get things started, first thing is here's our five round zero group uh, shot at 100 meters. Now generally I put an optic through one drop, one 
very, very high drop in the world of optics falling. This is probably worst case scenario, uh, short of it being so high that it would actually destroy any optic. But because I was also at the same time evaluating Scalarworks Leap Mount, which I'm using on the rifle for the period of this review, and it's probably going to stay on there forever, uh, I needed to do multiple drops to see if I could create a failure um, in the Scalarworks mount. So because I was trying to break the Scalarworks, realistically, uh, this time the, uh, the optic in, in question being the, the Razor 1-6 to six, got multiple drops. So here's that. Some good bounces in there. Uh, rifle still serviceable. Nothing broke on the optic, which is exactly what I wanted to see. Now let's do a five round, see a five round group uh, at the same distance to see if we've knocked it out of zero. I'm pretty happy with the results. Uh, it's not a one MOA gun, so it's not exactly a sniper rifle, if you will but it maintained a zero after multiple drops, which is what you should be able to ask for for any optic. And of course, is it realistic for a rifle to fall off a balcony like that? Eh, it's probably less likely. What is more likely is you to lean it up against something that to fall over on concrete, or for you to be interacting with your environment in practice or training and have it take a very hard impact against, say, a barrier, a barricade, a wall, a doorway, something like that. Uh, in, in my career, I've had optics be knocked out of zero or completely damaged beyond reasonable use just by making contact with the environment, which was a, a training experience, uh, but it's definitely something possible that can happen. And if you're using the optic in the moment, uh, because this optic is rather popular in law enforcement agencies where guys have a limited budget because they don't get paid a whole lot as cops, but they are authorized to use, if they want to, a variable magnification optic, the Razor is pretty popular in that category. Reason being is it, it gives you into a, a, what's considered to be a quality optic uh, at a reasonable price. And just based on my experience with the Vortex so far through the review process, uh, just over 2,000 rounds at this point, um, and again, I've seen them in the past and haven't really seen any issues with them, I would be willing to agree that, uh, yeah, this is a very good entry level, uh, if you want to consider the term entry level. Um, it's a very good initial purchase or smart buy if you're only going to buy one optic and you're going to use it for duty or some serious hard professional use. Now it's not all sunshine and daydreams. There is one thing about the Razor I do not like and that is the stiffness of the adjustment ring. And this is not just Vortex. A lot of companies they make that adjustment ring, my magnification ring, very very stiff and some companies, uh, the Razor in particular, does not provide me with a great deal of purchase. I'm gonna have to purchase an aftermarket uh, rat tail or, or magnification ring or whatever you refer to as that that thumb wheel or that 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 protrusion that you can use to more easily adjust your magnification setting i would like to them to see the to to see them reduce the resistance on that just a little bit because without a, a aftermarket or an option without a rat tail or uh, or whatever term you're going to use for uh an adjustment handle being added after the fact on there, it is a little hard to dial into that thing, especially if my hands are sweaty, if I got sunblocks on my hands, if it's raining. I would like to see that be the resistance be a little bit easier or for them to include an optional, but included in the package, uh, knob, adjustment knob that I can just attach and be ready to go. Other than that, um, I don't have anything bad to say at all about this optic. Um, of course, the argument's gonna come up, well, it's not made in America. Yeah, a lot of optics aren't made in America. Get used to it. And if your optic is made in America, are the electronics in your optic made in America? That jingoistic mentality of if it's not American made, it can't be quality is a little ridiculous. And it's usually, sometimes I see it come from people who have aim points on their guns, which I'm like, you know where that's from, right? You, you, never mind. just not even worth it. So, uh, Good optics can be made anywhere in the world as long as QC is adhered to and the design is good. While I do like to support American, completely 100% American made products, I would be naked and homeless if I only bought American because it's just not, it's just not possible anymore. The world is not that small. The world is not that disconnected. Uh, some optics are assembled in the U.S. from parts that come from other companies. Get over it. Uh, other countries. It's just a factor. That's, that's the fact of life. Um, there are cheap optics out there that are made in other countries, but you know what? There's cheap optics that are made in the U.S. too. Uh, so that's definitely not a factor I use in considering the purchase of an optic. Uh, while I do like to support American, Vortex is an American company. Uh, they employ people here in America, so I'm supporting people who work in America and live in America and are Americans, and I'm pretty happy about that. 
Uh, if you are looking or you're considering or you're wondering about upgrading, if you already have the razor, is it worth making the changeover? If you if your main consideration is weight, I'd say yeah, that, that weight savings is considerably noticeable. Uh, it, it's not going to be a larger concern for some people depending on the purpose of the rifle. And if and again, that's, a, that's an investment, but you can sell your old razor, buy the new one. Uh, that's something that I would do if the razor was the optic I had and they came out with a lighter version. I'd be like, I want that because lighter uh, can be better, especially if you get the same features and the same durability. Um, I was very impressed with the overall durability of the Razor during this process. It's something that I would recommend to people uh, based on their budget, based on their needs, based on what the optic is actually going to be for. Uh, it's not something I'm going to recommend for extreme long range precision shooting. But if you're looking for the ability to PID for intermediate ranges, and you want something that's inexpensive or compared to some of the other options out there, but it's going to give you uh, the ability to look out and see things a little bit closer than what you're going to get from a red dot or a 1 to 4, then the Razor is definitely going to be on my short list of optics that I'd recommend. I'm Aaron Count with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.